Hi everybody, this is Matt. Thanks for watching and welcome back. I'm here to talk about my experiences thus far with the Sig Sauer MCX rifle chambered in 5.56. I've been able to take this to the range a multitude of times and put I don't know how many rounds uh, down the pipe on this. Now, for years I have stayed away from piston-driven ARs because they tend to be proprietary systems and I'm always a little bit leery about that. I mean, I grew up back in the day when the first AR that I fired was an original Colt and everything was mil specs. So I grew up in that mil spec world and uh, with ARs, there are parts all over the place. They're that prolific. It's kind of like the AKs. With AKs, you can get parts for them like crazy. Can you get it from a proprietary system? That was my worry, especially with manufacturers that I hadn't heard of before. Big question in my mind that loomed was, well, what happens if they go out of business? Am I going to be able to get parts? What happens if they make modifications? Am I going to be able to get parts? And then how expensive will they be? Well, when Sig Sauer came out with the MCX, I know Sig Sauer. I like their handguns, especially the uh, P-Series, the P229, the P226. I absolutely love those. So based from my previous experience with SIG, I went ahead and literally bit the proverbial bullet and purchased this. Now one thing is, is that the build quality is exactly what I would expect from SIG Sauer, which is absolutely excellent. The other thing that I like about it, I'm a lefty. I'm a left-handed shooter predominantly. So this comes out of the box from SIG, set up for ambidextrous controls. So this has an ambi charging handle, an ambi safety, and ambidextrous magazine release. Works great, something that I didn't have to buy. And on this, it has a folding stock, which at first I thought, you know, not quite sure I like that. But when it comes to storage and that sort of thing, I do. I mean, I really, really like that part of it. It's just in shooting that it had some unintended consequences. And we might talk about that later. What else can I say? Um, I love the full length Picatinny rail on top of here. And I like the key mod handguard up front. The pick rail, I have not mounted a red dot optic on it yet. And you might say, why? Well, because it is that accurate. I mean, obviously I learned how to shoot ARs back in the days of iron sights when we didn't have lights and lasers and everything else available for them. And this has really been a joy to shoot. It has. The accuracy has been phenomenal right out of the box. You can ring steel very easily at 100 yards without really even thinking about it. So. That's why a red dot optic has never been on this firearm whatsoever. Now, let's talk about a couple of things that I didn't quite care for. One being the trigger. Nine and a half to 10 pound trigger right out of the box. That got changed. I don't like that, it's personal preference. I don't want to be tugging on a 10 pound trigger. Um, so I changed it. Now. When it comes to ARs, type of triggers I tend to like are Geissele. I like the Geissele triggers. Um, they've worked really great for me, so no sense in changing. However, did not have a Geissele available when I got this. Picked up a LAR instead. Works great. One thing that I did notice was that the trigger pins were running out toward the left side, especially the front one. And that was even with the original factory trigger. Now, if I take this other AR, you'll see something that I always add as an accessory on any AR that I have. And this happens to be a set of KNS non-rotating pins. Basically, it locks this in so the trigger pins do not rotate. They don't egg out the lower, they don't cause galling, they're just locked into place, they're not going anywhere. I like these, I like them a lot, that's why I put them on every AR. But, funny thing is I can't put them on this. Why is that? Well, let's show you. 
See that front trigger pin right there? And you notice this right here. That radius prevents me from putting a KNS pin in there. So the proprietary lower got me. I can't do it. Now, I guess I could if I went to a machine shop and I had a little pocket milled out there and on the other side, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to that expense. So I really wish that I could put KNS pins on here, but because of this radius, cannot do it. And like I said, uh, the trigger caused me a bit of a fit. Another thing from ergonomics is a lot of times I'll run a single point sling. Now I love the fact that I've got plenty of QD mounts, quick detach mounts available on this SIG, but I want to show you something. Again, we have proprietary lower, right? This won't rotate past this. Now, watch where my thumb shoots up to. My thumb basically gets pinned between the mount and the safety. I would prefer that that not be that way, but that's the way that it is. And if I had an even larger thumb, I'd probably like it less. Now, I have had a couple of viewers ask me about the Ambi Safety because it's a little bit on the stiff side. And I will agree with you because the more I work this, the more I get little blood blisters on my thumb because this is stiff and I'll get blood blister just right in there from working that safety. I talked to SIG about it and they're like, well, that's just the way we make them. We make them like that so they're safe and that's just the way it is. Okay, that's cool. I'm just used to something being a little bit different like this. So this doesn't take as much effort. Now, have I said before that the SIG Sauer is accurate and I really, really like that? Yes. I'll keep repeating myself. Now, for those of you that are familiar with ARs, we want to break this down, right? So we put our thumb on one side. We notice a little pin coming out. I'm going to hold it up here so everybody can see. And I can break it down real easy. And I want you to pay special attention to the bottom, right down in here, in that bottom lower. Do you see anything down there? Anything? different. No, it just looks like a regular AR lower, right? Sure it does. You might ask, well, why are you bringing that up? Well, I can tell you right now without taking this out of the vise that I cannot push that pin out with my thumb. So what I don't want to do, but I have to, is I have to break out the hammer and a punch, which I'm going to do right now. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push that pin out. You might have heard a little bit of a clunk and that was actually pressure being released. Let me show you why it is difficult to remove that. Articulate this guy around here. Whoops, sorry about bumping the camera. All right, right here in the bottom of the lower, what do you see? you see a little plunger assembly, right? So there's a little plunger in here that has got a spring behind it. And that actually applies pressure here, which makes it more difficult to get that pin out. And basically I have to do the same thing with this front pin, otherwise it's not coming apart. So very tight tolerances, but in the field, I tell you what, that, uh, that can be a little bit of an issue uh, for people because who's going to carry around as part of their piece of kit, a hammer and a punch. Not too many folks that I know. So that right there is kind of one of those things that bugs me just a little bit. And you know what I should have done? I should have left that thing apart. So let's just take it apart one more time 
and show you something else. So I'll go ahead, take this back out, and I will go and remove what typically we would call the bolt carrier group. Now this looks kind of funny. Doesn't look like what you normally see with your daddy's AR, does it? Two plastic rods, perhaps made out of Delrin, with springs, and this is piston driven, so this is how it reciprocates back and forth. Now you'll notice, uh, like right in here, I've got some wear, but that's to be expected. Um, Nothing odd about that. I haven't really noticed any weird wear patterns, but for uh, you folks out there that have never dealt with anything like this before, this is where you really want to read the manual. Because when it comes to removing the springs for cleaning, you want to make very, very certain that you do it according to the directions in the manual. Because if one of these springs gets pushed up in here too far or you don't get this seated properly, you can have a non-functioning gun that is damaged and that would be bad. So this is something that you would have to purchase from the manufacturer from Sig Sauer and it just simply is what it is because you know we bought a proprietary AR. But I will say Again, it's accurate. So what are my thoughts on this uh, to date? Really, it's very accurate. I like that part of it. But even though I enjoy shooting this, I, I still tend to favor my regular mil spec uh, AR. And part of it is got to do with the proprietary nature of things. And um, those are, are things that are very hard to, you know, really quantify because it's more about how you feel something and uh, how it handles for you. It is a beautiful firearm uh, when it comes to the, the function, when it comes to accuracy. But again, there are a few things that bug me just a little bit about it. And there you have it. That's just kind of like my take on it. So anyway, that's how things are going so far. I'll continue to give reports on it. And until next time, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it very much. And everybody have a good one and be safe out there.